So when Moses and the children of Israel was gathered around Sinai, Yahweh spoke to the Lord down into the area. You see? And they say, God and Yahweh say, we will do and be obedient. So we are in the 24th chapter of Exodus that we're going to go through this morning. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto Yahweh. Dog and Aaron, near and about him, and the seventy elders of Israel, and worship be about. So you tell Moses, did you read that? And he said unto Moses, And he said unto Moses, Come up unto Yahweh. Come up unto Yahweh. Thou, Thou, and Aaron, and Aaron, near that and abide, near and abide, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they worship be your father. And they have to worship a father. See, we know that. And Moses alone, and Moses alone, and Moses alone shall come up near Yahweh. And Moses alone must come up near unto the hour. Go ahead. But they shall not come nigh. But they who is the day that is Aaron near Nahum and Abide on the seventh of Elders cannot come close to the hour. Only Moses must come close. We don't. Neither shall the people go up with him. Neither shall the people who have gathered around on side, and neither will the people come up with Moses when he's coming up to the mountain. Or going close. So people. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh. All the words of Yahweh. And all the judgments. And all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice. And all the people answered with one voice. And said. And said. All the words which Yahweh had said. All the words which Yahweh had said. We will do and be obedient. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh. And rose up early in the morning, and built a altar under the hill. Under the hill. So that is where he showed the heart. He showed the delicate and how we call the first, first covenant at that time, which you call now the Old Testament. We don't. And twelve, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. See, and twelve what? Pillars. Pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay. We went into that last week. You see? So there's where they, they had the dedication of that covenant with the blood of all roots and heifers, what we call the Old Testament. You see? Give me the night. The night will speak. Then went to Moses. So after the day then came that first covenant, then went to Moses. Uh -huh. And Aaron. And Aaron. Near up and abide. Near up and abide. And seventy of the elders of Israel. And the seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Hold on there. Your, your Bible does not have Elohim in that power. But what they say is that Moses, Aaron, Nahum, and Bible, and seventy of the elders of Israel, they saw the one you call the Lord who is Elohim. And they walk around telling you, quoting the scripture to say, no man has seen God at what? Any time. But here it is in your book, in your Bible, that Moses, Aaron, Nahum and Abihu and seventy and the elders of Israel saw the one you call God. So then somebody would say the Bible is contradicting it, what? Self. But when there is no vision, divine vision and revelation, the people perish. So the understanding of it has come from this divine vision 
and revelation that Yahweh tells them as far as for the man and to do the end of the beginning. If one could have, all of us would have been saying the same thing. Let's be honest. See, we would have been saying no man has seen God. And when we come to the scripture, we would say, well, well, that is one of the things, you know, it's difficult to explain. See? See? That seems to contradict itself. You see? But when you're not using the true names and the true titles of the creator of the world, then that's how you will run into these conflicts. See? No, it really is a dream. No man has seen Yahweh at any time. Because Yahweh is pure spirit. Yahweh is the source, the substance from which everything comes from and yet abides with him. So no man has seen Yahweh at what? Any time. But they have seen any of them. You see? So Moses, Aaron, Nehemiah, and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel have seen. They were shown Elohim, which is the creation coming in by Elohim, which is Yahweh in his anthropomorphic uh, manifestation of himself. That's what Elohim is, what you call the word. See? Good. So they saw Elohim, who you call God. And there was under his feet. And there was under his feet. As it were, he were. So they show you the one you call God, who is Elohim. See, have feet. Don't you have feet? And it was under the his feet. As it were fearful. As it were the fearful of a sapphire stone. Of a sapphire stone, not sapphire is blue. See, and when the astronauts, she go beyond the Earth's atmosphere. See, and they look and they see the Earth. They see the Earth as a big blue map. Same book of Sapphire Stone, we know. And as it were the body of And as it were, they explain the body they saw. So he has feet and he has a body. See, and the body of heaven is cleanliness. Let me see what the King James Version say. And there was under his feet, as it were, a pale book of Sapphire Stone. And as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness, same thing. So they say the body was they were seen was a clear a heavenly body. It's a clear body, light on the light. The body of heaven in its what? Clearly, so it's a heavenly body. Mm -hmm. You know. And upon the nobles and the children of Israel, he laid his hands. You know, he has feet and he has a body. So don't you have hands, feet, and a body? Mm -hmm. Also, they saw Elohim. Also, they saw Elohim, you will have in your King James Bible. And also, they saw God. And they eat and drink. And they eat and drink. So, that eating and drinking he's speaking about is not physical eating and drinking, it is spiritual eating and drinking. Now, if you listen to these lectures, you are spiritually eating and drinking of the divine knowledge, of the divine vision and revelation. See, some of you will like what you eat it and what you drink it spiritually now, and some may not. See, just like you eat food. Some people like this type of food and some people don't like that. And then they eat and drink with it. So there you see Moses, Aaron, and Nehemiah, and the Bible, they see the one who called God. How is it they see him in a vision, not with their natural eyes? 
So then give me Revelation 1, and I'll take it 10 to 17. So now this is the one you call John the eyes of Patmos, who is truly a can because there's no change in him. And he said that he was in the eye of Patmos. Mm -hmm. I was in the spirit. He was not in the natural. He said, I was in the spirit. So he's not looking at nothing with his natural eye. What he's telling me about is what he was seeing in the spirit. Not a scholar mind. See? So he's having a spiritual or divine vision and revelation, just like Moses is having one. And the seven day elders of Israel and Nehab and Abide. And Aaron, Nehab ne ne and Abide. They are having a vision of Elohim. You know? On the Sabbath day. And he was on the Sabbath day. So you have to ask yourself a question. Why is he seeing his vision on the Sabbath day? It's good to read by me, you know. But could you understand? Do you know why he has to appear on the Sabbath day? I guess you don't know. Please read. And heard behind me a great voice. And he heard behind me a great voice. Why is he saying that he heard behind him? See, people preach it about about Bible, without the divine vision and revelation, you don't know what is, what is why he's saying these things. Everybody could read the Bible, but do they know why what is going on is going on? No. So you heard behind me, and I will pick that up on these questions to be answered at a, at a different lecture. I just want you to see. I want you to go and ask the religious leaders these questions, you see. See? So they answer. Because when you get them the answer, they go around and they copy it and they say they didn't know it already. That's what some of them do. They listen and they copy it and they say they didn't know it. See? We are here. Same. And he goes behind a voice saying, What thou seest? What thou seest? Write in a book. Write in a book. And send it to the seven assemblies. And send it to the seven assemblies. Which are in Asia. Which are in Asia. Unto Ephesus. Where you are? Which are in Asia, which are in Ephesus. And on to Semina. Simon. Simon. Ryan. Simon Ryan. Semina. Okay. You know, I wasn't born with that kind of song. We are. And unto Pergamos. And unto Pergamos. And unto Tyatria. And unto Tyatria. And unto Sardius. Mm -hmm. And unto Philadelphia. And unto Philadelphia. And unto Laodicea. And unto Laodicea. Now we say, listen to it. Read that first part again, send it to who? Send it to the seven assembly. Send it to the seven assembly. No, what he's saying is only seven assembly. See? Some people will have it in the book, seven churches. But it's only seven assemblies. So where are all these religions fitting in? My question is, the belief in the Bible, where does they fit in? When all these religions fit in, when 
It was like the sun, his body was like the sun. In the sun. That shining in its strength, that shining in its strength like it is in the noonday sun on a very hot day. You can't look at it because you're going to damage your eye from an actual stand. Read on. And when I saw him, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet. I fell at his feet. As dead. As dead. Very rich. And he laid his right hand upon me. You see, he's showing you your hands, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, And he said, Fear not. Fear not. I am the first. I am the first. I am the last. I am the last. I am he that liveth. I am he that liveth. And was dead. And was dead. And behold, I am alive. And behold, I am alive. Forevermore. Forevermore. So, he's alive for how long? Forevermore. So he's dead. Because he resurrected a life given of the Holy Spirit, you know. And have the keys of Sheol. And he has the keys of Sheol, you have? And of death. And of death. Which is, in other words, your King James goes over the top of the good word. His King James goes over the top the keys of hell and of death. See? So remember Moses, Nathan, and Abai, one of the seven of the elders, is describing the creator of who they saw. Then John is also explaining in his vision, in the spirit, the creator of this universe. And people go around saying, no man has seen God at any time. They have seen Elohim, the one who created the heavens and the earth. And if you notice, it's distinctly showing you, it means exactly like a man. Give me Matthew. Now, when Yahshua was in his ministry, remember I tell you that all he's doing in his ministry is fulfilling the law and the prophets. So we see Moses is seeing a vision of Elohim, who you see before God. Let me get down before I take that. Let me take Ezekiel. Let me take Ezekiel 1. God. Let me let me take the twenty six years. Now this is Ezekiel having a vision, and the little book says the vision of the beings, and he explaining what he's seen in this vision. A spiritual vision. I want to pick it up back and get it trimmed up for us. Let me take it. 24. I'll take it at the 24 verse. And when they went, and when they went, I heard the noise of their wings. 
I know it's a great water. Like the noise of great waters. As the voice of the Almighty. Did we get up to just now? The voice of many waters in Revelation. We know. As the voice of the Almighty. Um, as the voice of the Almighty. The voice of speech. The voice of speech. As the noise of a host. As the noise of a host. When they stood. When they stood. They let down their wings. They let down their wings. Wings. And there was a voice from the permanent. And there was a voice from the permanent that was over their heads. That was over their heads. And they stood. And when they stood, and had let down their wings. And had let down their wings. And above the permanent. And above the permanent that was over their heads. That was over their heads. Was the likeness of a throne. Was the likeness of a throne. Mm -hmm. As the appearance of a sapphire stone. And the appearance of a sapphire stone. Did that moment see that? In his vision, a pale book of sapphire stone. So Ezekiel is saying the same thing. He's confirming what Moses and John is saying. Read on. And upon the likeness of the throne. And upon the likeness of, the, of a throne. Was the likeness as the appearance of a man. As was the likeness as the appearance of a man above a point. So we see Ezekiel is seeing the appearance of a what? The likeness was the appearance of a man. This is the same thing Moses is seeing, is the same thing John and the eye of Bible is seeing in his vision. Mm -hmm. And I saw as the color of amber. And I saw what? As the color of amber. As, as the color of amber. As the appearance of fire. As the appearance of fire. Round about it. Round about it. Within it. From the appearance of his loins. From the appearance of his loins. Even upwards. Even upwards. And from the appearance of his loins. And even from the appearance of his loins. Even downwards. Even downwards. I saw as it were the appearance of fire. And, as, and I saw as it were the appearance of fire. And it had brightness round about. And it had what? Brightness round about. Brightness round about. It's the same thing that John is telling on the Isle of Atlas. The brightness of heaven and its clearness. So John did you finish that? So please read. As the appearance of the bow. As the appearance of the bow. That is in the cloud. That is in the cloud. In the day of rain. In the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. So was the appearance of the brightness that was round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Yahweh. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Yahweh. And when I saw it. And when I saw it. I fell upon my I fell on my face, and I heard the voice of one that spoke. And I heard the voice of one that spoke. Good. So now listen. All of these people, Moses, Ezekiel, John and the Isle of Patmos, is confirming one another. And they're telling you the so called which was truly Elohim. And all of them is telling you, he looks like a man. How a physical person looks like, he looks like exactly feet, hands, and a body. With hair white like wool. Hmm? And the glory of his body was as though it outshone the moon the sun. See? So, did I call the uh, 17th chapter of Matthew? So, now we ask for the Messiah, must fulfill these things. Remember, I told you, I keep telling you, everything that you see Yahshua doing is in fulfillment of the law and the prophets. So 
children coming after cannot do or say or see anything other than what Yahweh established in the law of the prophets. We know. And that's the sixth day. So when Yahshua Messiah is in his ministry, at this point in time, after six days, Yahshua taking Peter. Yahshua taking who? Peter. James and John. James and John. Hold on. So Yahshua taking Peter, James and John. Just like how Moses took Aaron, Nehemiah, and Abihu under the dispensation of the Lord. So under the dispensation of grace, Yahshua taking Peter, James, and John. Good. He taking them where? And bringing them up into a high mountain. And bring them up into a high mountain. Why is he bringing them up in a high mountain? Because he took Aaron, Nehemiah, and Abihu in the seventh year of the elders up into a high mountain. That's why. See if I didn't ask them if they didn't know why. I know they could answer. She could read the Bible. Everybody could read the Bible. But do they know what's really in it? See, the, the fact about it is, see, the scriptures are correct, but when you try to interpret the scriptures with a carnal mind, that is where everything has been messed up from the face of the earth. That is what has caused the mess up. Because people with a natural intelligence trying to penetrate the spiritual realm with a carnal mind. See? And the carnal mind is an enmity with Yahweh. Hmm? The carnal mind cannot understand the things of the spiritual realm because it is foolishness unto them. Neither can the carnal mind be so there. So you could be as bright as a bird. See? Your carnal mind still cannot understand the things of Yahweh. That's why this book that they're reading from is a sealed book to them because it is spiritual. You see? That is why they cannot interpret it. That's why they look for all types of things and pick out verses to suit. See? What their carnal mind could accept. See? So it takes Peter, James, and John up into the high mountain after six days. Read on. And was transfigured before And was transfigured before them. In other words, what transfigured See? He revealed himself to them spiritually. They were seeing him naturally, you see, walking with them. But now we take Peter, James, and John up into the high mountain. You see? And he transfigures before them. He started to show them who he is spiritually, read on. And his face did shine in the sun. And his face did shine as the sun. So isn't that the same thing you see here in those telling us? Isn't that the same thing that John in the Isle of Patmos was telling us? Isn't that the same thing that we, uh, Moses saw? And his face did shine as the sun. But showing you, even in his spiritual appearance, he appeared like a man. And his face did shine like the sun. See? Read on. And his raiment was white as light. And his raiment was white as light. That is what all of them saw. His body was the body of heaven in his planet. His raiment was white like what? Light. No when light passes through a prison, prison. We get all the colors of the spectrum. 
You see? So that is all known. He is the light of the world. See? And spectrum means ghost. See? Light known to the Holy Ghost. So then when he's making, that's why he made all things what? The scripture tells him he made all things beautiful. He made nobody of him. He made nothing of him. See your carnal mind with a little help from them false angels, satanic angels, just make things good and make it of me. See? They the ones that judge him. But what he made, everyone he made, he made all things what? Beautiful. See? Showing you himself. So everything in the universe is a representation of the Yahweh and all that. You see? That beauty and that light. See? You have a garden. If the garden only have one type of flowers, Will you call that beautiful? Or will you end up saying it's monotonous? Yes, it's going to look good, but it's monotonous. Because after time, it becomes boring seeing the same kind of flower everywhere you go. But when you see this garden, and it has different varieties of flowers in different shapes and sizes, you'll just say, oh, that's beautiful. Is that correct? Why? Because Yahweh has made everything what? Beautiful according to himself. So all that light and all the colors is coming from him. Eh? Did one of them describe that it was like a rainbow? With all those colors? So then when he made people, he made all of us with all these beautiful colors. You see what I'm saying? And if we can appreciate that, we can start to appreciate each other in this universe. See? Yeah, we know. And we know. And we go. They appeared unto them Moses. And we go, they appeared unto them Moses. Moses. And so now he see it. See? In this picture. They appear unto them Moses and Elias. You know who you think Elias? Do you know Elias is also the one who called John the Baptist? You see, Moses and Elias talking with the Ashur. You see? In, in that vision. We don't. Then answered Peter. Then what answered Peter? Answered unto Yahshua. Answered unto Yahshua. Sire, it is good for us to be here. Sire, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt. If thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles. Let us make here three tabernacles. One for me. One for you, Yahshua. One for Moses. One for Moses. And one for life. And one for life. So the question you should ask is that why would they say that? Everybody could read the Bible. Why would Peter, James, and John say, let us make three tabernacles? One for you, Yahshua. One for Moses. And lights. See, you can answer that. Ask your religious leader and come to that. So, then, we'll answer it for you. But ask them first. Come on. While he was yet speaking, behold a bright cloud. You behold a bright cloud overshadowed them. Overshadowed them. People when they came out of Egypt, they were led by the cloud and showed the observing. See? Show the willingness, they were led by that cloud. And we hold the bright clouds overshadowed them. Over and we hold a voice from the cloud. And we hold a voice from the cloud. Which said, which said, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. And who my well pleased. See? Go 
go ahead. And when the disciples heard it, and when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces. They fell on their faces. Did John fell on his face? They fell on their face. Yeah, they fell on the disciples, fell on the field, and they were so they were afraid. They say so afraid. We don't. And Yahshua came and touched them. And Yahshua came and touched them. And said, Arise. And said, Arise. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes. And when they had lifted up, they saw no man save Yahshua. And as they came down from the mountain, Yahshua charged them saying, Tell the vision to no man. So you see, this whole experience they have is a divine vision and revelation. See, that's what we say here. He revealed himself what? To them. So you say, Tell the vision to no man. We don't. Until the Son of Man be risen from the dead. So that's what we are with that man. Communicate with man to divine vision and what? And revelation. You see, for the kind of man to not understand this thing with the spirit. Because the saving word, you see, for them to know who he was in a body, he has to give them a divine vision and revelation for them to know. Because they were walking with him and they did not know who he was. See? Because the natural man cannot see the spirit man that is in house in the natural man. So when we go to the Bible and we see Moses is telling you in Genesis, Yahweh made man in his own image and his own work like this. That is how it was good. You see, that the exactly how we make are made up is exactly how the one who created us created us just like himself. So, in other words, we cannot do anything better than he, he has done. Because in all to yourself, you put yourself out, outside the realm of who you really are. See? Because Yahweh made man in his own image and his own likeness, and you are here an exact copy of who he is. That's who you are, an exact copy of you. See? So you cannot improve on the one you call God or anything. So therefore, you cannot improve on man. Any alteration of man means that you have gone outside of the realm of who you really are. Because you are an offspring of Yahweh as man. So that is why you should not be called for any means or any purpose. So you should ask yourself a question, what spirit or what person will tell you to call to yourself? Because you have been made perfect 
in the image and likeness of Yahweh Elohim. We will need a that correction. See? That is why he made you. He made you and I just like him. So when Moses in his nature, when John in his nature, that is how Moses could say, Yahweh made man in his own image and his own likeness. Because when he looked at Elohim, he saw him looking exactly like himself, with feet, hands, and a body. But Moses own, John own, Ezekiel own, you see, and, and uh, Peter, James, and John own, they were all physical bodies. And they were seeing that the spirit man, who is Elohim, who you call God, is just like each and every one of us. Made just like each and every one of us. So we should not be all in this body. See? Under no circumstances whatsoever. Why? Because we cannot improve on heaven. Or we cannot improve on God. The one you call God. You can't improve on him, so therefore you cannot improve on yourself. See? Let's go back to Exodus 24 chapter. So while we go in there, that the same reason why the Apostle Paul will tell us in Romans 1, 19 and 20, see, and it says, for that which may be known of Yahweh is manifested in us. Anything you want to know about the one you call God, who is Elohim, is manifested in there. For Yahweh had showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. He said the invisible things of Yahweh Elohim, or the one you call God, is clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. And the greatness of, the greatness of his crowning creation is mankind. Mankind is the crowning of his creation. He said the invisible things of Yahweh Elohim from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal purpose and supernal nature so that we have no excuse. So what I'm telling you, see, and one thing about the one you call God, you manifested it. Because you are made in the age and likeness of the one you call God, who is Elohim. And we have weaknesses, both in the law and the prophecy and the fulfillment, telling you how we look. That he has a body just like you and I. See, he has feet, hands, you see, and a body. You have feet and to the body. So these are our witnesses to tell us who Elohim is the one who created heavens and the earth. So that's how we take the natural to understand the spiritual. And he went further than that, you know. When he made man, he made the breath of life in man, and man became a living, came and lived and soul. And breath means spirit, so he put the spirit in man. So we walk in and talk in, in his name. See? That's why the breath of life we breathe is his name.
So not only did he make man in his own image and his own likeness, but he put his spirit in man. See? But somebody, some fallen angel, has robbed you of that knowledge. Who you really are. See? Unless we return to that knowledge, then we will just be looking for God all over the place, or the one we call God, who is Elohim. We will be running from religion to religion, you see, on our knees, begging to know the one you call God. Hmm? And the one you call God, who is Elohim, the spirit of the living Elohim, is right inside of you and I. And when we become conscious of it, then we might live different. See, because the one who is in us is going to be the one who will be judging us. See, everybody have mostly, I should say, to qualify myself or to qualify what I'm saying. Most people believe that it's after you're there you're going to be judged. Judgment is going to come sometime after you're there. See? That is a trick. So that you could perform the fool and think at the last minute, you see, you could get them set up your pious and you're crying, you're begging for forgiveness, and somebody going to get in your funeral and say, Oh, yes, we give you heart to the Lord. Hmm? Not knowing every minute of your life you are judged. See, judgment is going on. We are in the judgment already and have been since Pentecost. See, but the carnal mind don't know that. See? So the one who has made us in his own image and likeness has put his spirit in us. Because he liked every man that cometh into the world. See? So yes, let's go back to In the 12th verse, now what did we finish? You see, the other verse is about in the 12th verse. Please read. And Yahweh said unto Moses, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Come up to me. No, remember. He had Moses, Eva, Nana, and Abihu, and the seventh of the elders, you see, at the back of the mount here. And he's on top of the mount and transfigured himself before them. Yeah. Then he says to Moses now, Come up to me. Come up to me. Into the mount. Into the mount. So come further up now. Come straight up the mount. Uh huh. And be there. And be here. And I will. And what? Commandments. And commandments. Which I have written. Which I have written. That thou mayest teach them. That thou mayest. And Moses rose up. And his minister Joshua. And his minister the tell you the book Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of the Lord. And Moses went up into the room. To the elders. And he said unto the elders. Tarry ye here for us. Stay at the platform. Don't come up. No further. Tarry ye here for us. Until we come again unto you. Until I come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, if any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. Let him come unto them. So what happened there? See, here they are. We have Moses now 
rose up and his minister, the tell you, Joshua, rose up in the right, and the two of them went up into the mountain. And that has escaped the theologians and the religious leaders of the world. Now, when you go right back down to the 24, the same 24 chapter, and the second verse, it says, And Moses alone shall come near Yahweh, or near Elkan, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. So now, when he was invited to come straight up into the mountain, was told to come alone and by himself. Don't bring nobody. So if you have a good kind of mind, or you're very educated in reading, you see, you will realize that Moses rose up and his minister, Joshua rose up and went up in the mount. Then that is contrary to what Yahweh told Moses, come alone and by your what? And by yourself. So one would say, and judge the fact and say that Moses was dis disobedient to the spoken word of Yahweh because he's taking Joshua with him. Hmm? But remember, there is no change in Hebrew. So this man they call Joshua is somebody else. Is somebody you, you knew nothing about. You see? Because this is Yahshua or Yahshua out there. It's certainly a Joshua. In other words, the one who was speaking to Moses. You see? Is the one who invited Moses up into the mountain. See, because all the time we would read them, Moses was speaking to Yahweh. Hmm? And the one who called Joshua is Yahweh in a body back there. That is who he is. That is Yahweh in a body as Yahshua or Yahushua back there. In a body. The one you call God, he's in a body here with Moses and the children of what? Israel. Walking and talking with them. Hmm? Not up above no sun, moon, and stars. No superstition. And he's here with them. And he's talking to Moses. See? So he invites Moses up and he said, Moses, you come alone and buy your what? Sir. Now for you to understand it a little better, think about someone inviting you to their home. And they tell you, don't bring anybody with you. Come alone and buy yourself. But the one who invited you came and met you and came and met with you and brought you to, to his home. Did you come alone and by yourself? That is exactly what is happening here. The one who invited Moses up into the mountain is the one who rose up with him see, and came into the mountain with him. The one you call Joshua, who is Yahushua or Yahshua, back there with Moses, and the children of Israel. So then, the same thing he did with Peter, James, and John transfigured before him for them, and he took them up to the high place, so he's taking Moses up into the high place into the mountain. That is what he's doing. He has taken Moses up into the high place, and what he has done, he has trans he's transfigured before him. See? So Moses here is in the mouth. And if you notice something, we have Moses 
physical body like this lay down here. You see? And Dr. King explained it. See? That more that Yahweh was not communicating with Moses as a physical man. Moses was there out here, and the creator, Yahweh Elohim, was communicating with the spirit man that was in Moses, that was like unto the spirit man that is in the one who called Joshua, who is Yahushua or Yahshua. It was spirit communicating with spirit. See? And Moses' experience was that of a greater spirit, greater than himself, communicating with him. And that is the same exact experience that Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley had when he received his divine vision and revelation. He said, Yahweh just left his body down and he experienced a spirit greater in power and mind than his own approaching. He said he felt, you see, Moses and the 70 elders approached the mountain. See? And that is why he's qualified. He said, sure, the, the vision that Yahweh gave him. So Moses went up here, and I saw Yahushua or Yahshua, who you call Joshua, just transfigured himself before him and started to show Moses, you see, that he has manifested himself from pure spirit into an anthropomorphic being that is having the shape and form of a man without flesh and blood. A spiritual man. And he should, in this shape and form, of a man without flesh and blood, he changed himself into this intangible, but those intangible sanctuary, which is the, the tabernacle. See? That is himself. He reproduced from himself this tabernacle and showed the creation coming in by his side according to this divine tabernacle, which is himself. He is the divine pattern of the universe. See? Consisting of a most holy place. A holy field and a world round about. One, two, three compartments, but one tabernacle back. See? And that's how Moses could understand, see, that the creator coming in from abstract to intermediary into the concrete of the natural. Show that everything in the universe is created exactly like that. Coming from pure spirit, which is the abstract, to the intermediary, to the concrete or the natural that you can appreciate with your natural eyes, you can taste, you can feel, you know, you can smell. See? All things coming in exactly according to the pattern. So the pattern is a spiritual pattern before it became a natural pattern. The creator is a spiritual being before he manifests himself into the lines of the Virgin Mary. Okay? So all things in this universe, every living thing in this universe, 
has come from pure spirit. Everything in this universe is spirit materialized. See? Which is one or other expression of Yahweh, the great creator of this universe. Go down in the next verse of 24. And Moses rose up. Chief. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of Elohim. You will have the mount of God. Mm-hmm. And he said unto the elders. And he said unto the elders, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matter to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount. We are. And a cloud covered the mount. And a cloud covered the mount. So Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. My question is, why did a cloud cover the mount? That's my question. Do you know? Mm -hmm. We know. And the glory of Yahweh. And the glory of Yahweh. Abound upon Mount Sinai. Abound upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. And the cloud covered it six days. And the seven days. To remember. Ashton of the Son and disciples, you see in a cloud covered it. We know. And seven days. And the seven days. Go on to Moses. Mm-hmm. And the cloud of God amongst Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. Mm hmm. But at the at the point where you have in your Bible six days, do you see anything there? Do you see anything in your Bible after six days? What do you see? A cola. See, you see, you have punctuation marks in English, and a cola tells you that there needs to be an explanation to follow this. Six days. See? So if I was one of those theologians that went to theology college and seminary school, when I read six days and I see the colon, I will continue reading and say, and the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of Yahweh was like the devouring fire on top of the mount and in the eyes of the children of Israel. That is what I would do. Because I had no vision on my revelation. Or where there is no vision, the people what perish. So that is what they have been teaching this day. See? But where the calling is, when Moses went into the cloud, in the midst of the cloud. In other words, that is symbolizing Moses entered into the realm of eternity, not into the realm of time. That is why he had to go in the cloud. See? And when he went to, to um, the sixth day where it's a colon, then we go to Genesis.
sheep. That is where Genesis 1 1 started from after the fall of After Moses went into the cloud, see, and the cloud covered it, you see. You see, read on. In the beginning. Moses now, because Genesis is the first book of Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses says, in the beginning, Elohim created the, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. There should be a question there. One should ask, in the beginning of what? Every theologian and religious leaders that have read this and have heard them, they tell you in the beginning of the creation. And they tell you the beginning of the creation starts here. Hmm? No, it's not the beginning of the creation. In the beginning, Moses is saying, in the beginning of my vision, See? So when he entered into the cloud six days, but if you notice something, in the 24th chapter of Exodus, it tells you six days, and it did not explain what happened for the six days. And nobody has seen that. So it takes a divine vision and revelation for Yahweh to bring that out to us. If you go back to 24, write that by that verse. Did they explain to us what Moses was doing in the cloud for six days? Hmm? Are you seeing that? What you see, see what's happening there? When Moses entered the cloud six days by the polar. Is there any explanation of those six days in the Bible there? See, I want to make it plain. There is no explanation of what went on. Moses entered into the cloud. Where is the explanation of what was going on? See, he's entered into the realm of eternity. See, so what Moses is doing is explaining See, in the beginning of my vision, Elohim showed me how he created the heavens and the earth. Read on. And the earth became without form. And the earth became. If you notice the words, is, the words is became. See? It became without form and void. Why? Because before it came up into the mountain, it had form and it had birth. Isn't that so? So when he enters into the he saw that the earth became without form and void. See? Read on. And darkness was upon the face. And he said that was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the water. See, and the spirit of Elohim, see, you appeared upon the face of the water. And uh -huh. Elohim said. And what? And Elohim said. And Elohim said. Let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. And there was light. And Elohim saw the light. And Elohim saw the light. And it was good. And it was good. And Elohim divided the light and the darkness. He divided the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day. And the Elohim called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the darkness he called light. And the evening and the morning. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And Elohim said, Hold on. So now we have this going on. And we have the children of Israel coming out to teach it. And someone would say, Well, just like how we did it in the creation. See? He divided the light of the darkness from him.